did the same thing. They did the same thing with Joe Rogan. But that's bad. They, they're doing the same thing with 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 Ivermectin and with Joe Rogan. They're, they're doing the exact same thing. Yeah. How can we trash anybody that isn't fully on board with the woke agenda? No matter what they've done, no matter who they are, what they've done, what they've said in the past, no matter what. Yeah. If you aren't all in, you're out. Brendan Hunt, and, and you're, you're in, in the, the hunt. hunt. Greetings. What's up, man? It's been a couple weeks, man. Yeah, yeah. we've 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 had some traveling busy. and some yeah. kind of busy. Yeah, I mean, I figured we give we give the listener a break from hearing us yap <laughs> for an hour every week. <laughs> give you some time to review some of the old material, study up on some of our past episodes, and let us know which one you like the most. And we figure if we keep putting out content every single week without giving you a bit of a respite. Respite. You know, hey. It's a good word. Hey, man. It's a really good hey. word. And yeah. also, just so the listener knows, I, I had a comment from a buddy of mine the other day. We are available on Spotify as well as iTunes uh, if you want to listen into the car. Because I had a buddy who said, I watch you guys on YouTube. I'm like, you could just listen to us as well. No, but you want to see us. Though. But you want to see. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we, we bought that action, we boss. We bought that action, boss. You think, you think I dress like this for myself? Because I do. <laughs> <laughs> we. I. I. We. we. See, we're inverted. We do. Yeah. So, theme today is your pants are on fire. Now, your pants are on fire. <laughs> if, okay. you, if you know what I mean. But that's not what we're going to be talking about. I'm talking liar, liar. Pants on fire. Yeah. Yo. Pants are on fire. <laughs> pants on fire. So who's so who's whose pants are on fire? Juicy Smolier. <laughs> <laughs> the gay black French actor. It's not only gay and black, but, but he's, he's also, also French. French. <laughs> so <laughs> this is one of those situations. Juicy Smolier. Good old Juicy. When you look at what's happening more broadly in our country, and especially for for those who are not uh, aware of the full story, first of all, read up on it, A, and B, watch Dave Chappelle talk about it because he gives such a wonderful synopsis of what actually happened. You essentially have a black actor in 2019 who staged... A white supremacy act against himself, <laughs> but staged it with Nigerians. So no white people were harmed in the filming of this. <laughs> you get what it gets better? Apparently he paid with a check. <laughs> this is you're too stupid. This is cash only transaction. Come on, man. So this guy essentially he's he's in Chicago. I don't know if that's true, but I and and it probably is. I mean, and, it w- and it wouldn't be and it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the worst part of the story. <laughs> that wasn't the first mistake he made. Trust me. Writing cutting the check was the was, last mistake. Yeah. She's like that's icing on the cake right there. So Juicy hires two brothers, one of them who is one of his personal trainers, and pays them thirty five hundred dollars to throw a, ble- a bleach-like substance on him, tie a noose around his neck. He also said that these two individuals came shouting to him with MAGA hats on, saying this is MAGA country, of course saying these are Trump supporters, <laughs> who in the middle of downtown Chicago are assaulting him and performing racist acts against him. Okay. That's what happened. Yes, good assessment. After all of this, a jury of his peers has convicted him on five of six counts that are basically lying to the police. Right. 
because nobody actually did this to him. Now, why do I bring this up? Because what he is doing and what he's inciting, how insidious that is to our culture and our well-being, you know how dangerous that is, Wesley? Very. And people were backing him and supporting him and Black Lives Matter. We can't believe that this happened. Oh, yeah, Gail King and all of them and all the liberal news outlets and CNN and MSLSD and all these guys. <laughs> they were all just <laughs> they're just like <laughs> justice for Joe for Jesse Juicy. Just Juicy. whatever. Justice for like I can't believe this happened. And like and like I say, you know, there what it does is it cheapens the incidences in the times where this is actually real. Absolutely. It turns into the boy who cried wolf type scenario. Yes. And what you do is you get other people hurt real bad. Yes. See, because this is this is this is bad for both sides. Because guess what, Wesley? There is racism. Yeah. And there is homophobia. Mm-hmm. And people are experiencing it every day. You just cheapened those that, that experience it for real. Yes. You cheapened their experiences. Yes. And in the process of doing so, you took a fractured con- country and made you it made worse. it even more fractured. And you made dangerous. it worse. It's dangerous. It's, it's a ridiculous. dangerous game. It's ridiculous. It's a dangerous game. So I start off with Juicy. Come on, man. Your pants are on fire. Yeah. Come on, man. You know who else's pants are on fire? You really want to know what I'm going to say, huh? <laughs> you really want to know, huh? Whose pants are on fire? Right? Kamala Harris's pants are on fire. <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> you know how I feel about this. <laughs> I, I don't know if you saw this today. You already know how I feel about this. I don't know if you saw this today. The, the, she did an interview with the Wall Street Journal today. And in this interview, they were asking her if her and Joe Biden have discussed his next presidential run and if he is going to be running. Yeah. And her response was basically, I don't even think about that and it hasn't come up. And I'm like, so let me get this clear. We have a 79 (laughs) year old president who can't spell president, who is (laughs) clearly to, okay, I'm sorry. We're not doing that anymore. I, I take that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I promised that I wouldn't do that kind okay. of stuff anymore. Okay. Okay. So I'm sorry. It's, you're, Go ahead. You're forgiven. Continue. You have a 79 year old president, president of the United States of America who has clearly seen better days. That's not a. That's not a slight on him. No, no, that's just facts. The, the guy has clearly seen better days. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyway, he see he see his best days when you give 10 percent for the big guy. <laughs> oh. But he's trying to get back to his best days because he's trying to build back better. (laughs) But it's not getting better. It's only getting worse. It's getting worse. (laughs) Okay? So Kamala Harris says, well, we haven't really discussed that and we're not talking about that and that's not a concern right now. And I'm like, if that's not a concern right now, then when is it a concern? Yeah. If we have somebody who's going to be in their 80s and running for president who has clear, diminished mental capacity Capacities. from what he used to have. And I, say, I don't say this to be mean. Yeah. I say this because in 2014 and 2015, man. I saw him speak live a number of times, different. and he was far more impressive than he is now. Yes. Far more. He's a different person. He wasn't that impressive then, but. <laughs> <laughs> what? See, what? You can't, what? See, you can't, what? See, what? See, what? What? See, that's why you can't have nice stuff. <laughs> Sorry. That's why you can't I. have nice stuff. <laughs> and it, it throughout, part of the reason why Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, Jen Psaki, part of the reason why their pants are on fire is because they continue to lie to the American people. And we know better. When we are living in this country and seeing what's happening. Every single day. We're watching them every single day. They are splicing numbers and saying, well, there's not as many people that are unemployed right now, so it looks like our economy is going pretty well. (laughs) We have the highest inflation that we've had in this country in 40 years. I know we know it's we we can see this. All beef is priced like Kobe now, man. I know it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. And, and they will sit there and tell us, as if we're not experiencing this right now, that everything is okay, and the economy's going well, and we're bouncing back and we're recovering. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, 
we have the Fed saying we're going to do uh, probably uh, you know three different actions to make sure we can get inflation under check in the next year. Yeah, I know. You don't and, have, and, to- and they keep saying it's transitory. This is, so they, by the way, they've stopped saying that now, but they've been saying this is transitory. This is this isn't transitory. You don't have to. This is spending like it's Mesopotamia, Rendon. Yeah. We we spent more in the last year than we spent in World War II accounting for inflation. Wow. In the entirety of World War II accounting for inflation. Wow. No, no, this is not transitory. No. No. Meanwhile, health care costs are up over 10% now. So if it wasn't enough that we're paying at the pump, yeah, and we're paying for for any consumable good more. If it wasn't enough that supply chains are are yeah. in a terrible place right now, if it wasn't enough that a Ford Forerunner costs as much as a Ferrari, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. Okay, I, I thought I saw I saw what you did there too with the alliteration. You like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I try to. That's yeah, pretty good. Peter Piper Peck Pepper. <laughs> Run rock rock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as if that's not enough, then we have people that are coming right into our face and they're saying, oh no, trust me, this is okay. Yes. No, I don't trust you and this is not okay. Yeah. Because your pants are on fire. Yes. And now you see us in a position even further where you think about the Omicron variant. And I've really struggled with thoughts on the Omicron variant because perhaps- I thought the Megatron variant. <laughs> <laughs> the Optimus Prime variant? <laughs> no, man. Optimus is a good guy, man. It's an Autobot, man. Oh, oh. No, this is a this is a Decepticon. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see what I'm saying? I see exactly. I see what you did. Yeah, there. This, the Decepticon. This is the Decepticon. <laughs> it's happening again. It's happening. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> the Decepticon <laughs> variant. <laughs> so Maracon, Marion, whatever, dude. This is. A, this is another lie. Go ahead. Go ahead. It just Wesley, explain to me. Okay. <laughs> I know where you're going with this. Explain to me how the UK is now having the highest numbers that they've had during the pandemic. Okay. <laughs> Do you know how many people have died of the Omicron variant? Redden, go ahead. One. One person. So we clearly have a variant of this virus that is less severe and affects people less than the other variants. Yeah. Now, as somebody who's a native Houstonian, you know the many trials over the years, the the biological things that, that they've done where if you have a huge mosquito population, you bring in something to eat the mosquitoes. And yeah. that makes it better. Maybe you have a population of something else, but at least you don't have all those mosquitoes. Yeah. To me, that's kind of like what the Omicron variant is. Yeah. If you bring in a variant that's less severe to people, that then gives them natural immunity to the worst variants, I'm trying to figure out how that's a terrible thing. So it's crazy, too. Every time we get a new Decepticon variant, right, the other variants go away. We don't talk about the other variants. <laughs> So it's like we get a new Decepticon variant, and then everybody gets this new one. Delta's we've, gone. We've compl- what, happened to, what happened to Delta variant? <laughs> what was the first? Was it Alpha? I don't even know what the first one was. <laughs> I've lost track. Right? I don't even know what the first one was. I've lost track. But that's what I'm trying to figure out in, in all that's going on. And you see it with a number of universities like, like your Brenda, grad school let's call on Cornell, is, Cornell. This is a con- This is a control issue. Yes, it is. That's all this has turned into now. And if people don't have the where the wherewithal to wake up and realize exactly what's happening right now, then that that's then that's your fault. This is a control issue. Yeah. Get on with your lives, open back up, go get vaccinated if you see fit, figure it out. Guess what? In Houston, Texas, there is no more COVID. I said it. There, I said it. I have now lived my life here for the last year. Renan, I don't have a mask in my car. I don't, I, the only time I have worn a mask in the last year has been at the airport. Yeah. Every establishment that I've walked in er, today, this is my fifth place I've walked into today. There are no masks. We are living our lives. Traffic is back. It's over. 
stop allowing the government to to commit crimes of fear into the population so you just shut everything down and figure out what happens guys go back to work and then i am so done right, yeah right, i just came from north carolina this is i just came from a wedding in north carolina and great you take wedding, your shirt off and great twist it around your head, head spin so like, like a, a helicopter, helicopter. <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty good <laughs> No Carolina. <laughs> this one's for you. Uh-uh, this one's for us, us, us. Yeah. Who am I? Um, um, <laughs> stop, stop. Mother. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you in North Carolina. That's funny. At what, one I, other I, thing. I North Carolina. Remember when we used to watch, uh, like, <laughs> when, when, like ABC and CBS would put the R-rated movies on network TV, so they would bleep out all the stuff that was that was R-rated. Yeah. And whenever they would they would say uh, the F word, they'd be like, "Man, come here, you stupid sucker." Yeah. <laughs> this is a mother sucker. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty funny. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. Uh, so it, so and I walk, I, I walk, I walk in many establishments every day because we're busy. We're doing a lot of things. Sure. And like I haven't been asked to wear a mask, seen a mask. I don't even. Some workers and some restaurants do here, others don't. Like it's 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 not a thing anymore. Yeah, it really isn't. I I, I walk. I'm in North Carolina, and, and I I walk into the hotel, and like you know me, the second <laughs> the second I get off the plane, it, I am it is it is future mask off. I am I just I just I only wear it. I'm I'm here so I don't get fined. Yeah, I only wear it when yeah. I have to. I get off the plane, that thing comes off. So I walk into the hotel, and, if, and the people, the concierge desk, sir, sir, do you have a mask? I said, why? <laughs> <laughs> Let me answer that question by posing another question. Why? Do you have They're a like, mask oh, I sir, can wear? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I did. Yeah. I said, no, I don't. But if you have to give me one, right? and I'm like, what's so much different in, with the air in Houston than North Carolina. So last the last couple of weeks, we've had the lowest incidences of COVID since this whole thing started in the last weeks in Texas and in Houston, also in Florida. What's going on in DC? What's going on in North Carolina? What's going on in California? Like what's what's going on? What are you, what's so different there than here? I guarantee you it would be the same thing here in Houston if we had refrigerator trucks pulling up to everybody's house yeah. every single day because of COVID. That's not happening. I'm not saying that COVID is not a real thing no. because it is. What I am saying no. is the risk is to the point now that it's time for us to get back to work. Well, Wesley, to and your live our lives and to, not in fear. To your point, and this is this is something that I always have to be very direct with our listener when we talk about things like this. What the media is going to say is, see, Wesley Hunt is saying that COVID is not real. That's that's. Or they're going to twist it even further and say, see, Republicans don't believe that we should protect people. That's the kind of garbage yes. that they're going to put out there as if I don't care about people. And it's dehumanizing us in a way where we don't really care about our. our as if our we episodes. haven't lost a family member to COVID. Yes. Because we have. Yes. So I'm not saying that. That's the message. So the interesting piece is, and we've said this a number of times. Nobody's saying don't get vaccines. You're not hearing that from in the hunt. Nope. Nobody's saying don't get booster shots. You're not hearing that from in the hunt. But be careful with who you listen to and how they typecast people. Because people like us have been typecasted our whole lives. Yeah. You know, somebody sees you and you know this is my biggest thing for you that I've always that that has always bothered me. It's like, oh, you're really big. What sport did you play? And I'm always like, nah, that, that guy has a degree from West Point and three degrees from Cornell. Yeah. You know, we got to be careful about who we typecast. Yeah. Another typecasting that's happening in our country right now is January 6th. It's a typecasting that's happening. Yeah. As we look at this, as we look at, at the perception and what the media is telling you, the media says, well, every Republican believes that everything was okay with January 6th and an assault on true. the Capitol was okay it's and that true. we should. That's not true. It's not true. It's I'm, not true. I, 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 do you want? Do you know? I, I just it's funny you bring up January sixth, and I do want to say this too because 
What I also don't like is how people just are okay with saying it's Trump's fault yeah. and walking away. I have a problem with that. Yeah. Now, see, you and I grew up in a home of personal responsibility. Yes. You and I grew up in a home to where my parents didn't, our parents didn't care what somebody else did, what somebody else says, yeah. what somebody, you are responsible for your own behavior. Yeah. I don't like the idea of teaching our young people that we get to blame other people for individual adults breaking the law. Yeah. I actually don't like that. In fact, if you are a person that went into the Capitol <clears throat> and you should not have been there and you are taking property and you're going in people's offices you should and be you're in breaking jail. glass, as an adult, that's your fault. Yeah. Yeah. For society to sit around and say, it's Trump's, it's Trump's fault because they were there and, and, and it's Trump's fault. And we don't place the blame on the person that broke the law that's sending a very dangerous message to our young people. And Wesley, the big problem is there's this massive double standard there, mm -hmm. okay? Because while we're investigating January 6th and we do need to know security protocols and what's happening, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like, get that. In the summer of 2020, Oof. when... Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were trashing police departments and talking about defunding them and everything about police are, are wrong. In that process, and people were destroying others' property and rioting Ooh. across the country, did anybody blame Joe Biden or Kamala Harris? No, neither did I. And neither do I. Because I'm consistent on neither it. Neither did I. I. I don't blame Democrats for that. No, because these— I blame the individual. I blame the individual that was looting and rioting. Yes, now, I, should, the, should, should our leadership have taken a better stance to defend other people's property? I would say yes. Could they have done things better from a leadership position to yes. help bolster? Yes. I don't blame them. No, the person who threw a Molotov cocktail through I, somebody's window, guess what? The person that person I should blame. be going to jail. That's the person I blame. Squarely. And now, as a result of a lot of these things, and as a result of, of a lot of left-leaning district attorneys and what's happening in our country, yeah. homicides are up 30% this Nancy, year. Did you see Nancy Pelosi yesterday? Actually, I put this I put this actually on my campaign Twitter account. No. I don't understand. There seems to be a crime wave and a spike in crime in this country, and, and I don't understand where it's coming from. You've been crapping on police officers oh, for horrendous. a year and a half. <laughs> like, what do you mean? How, how, do, how do you not? What do you mean? When you're de when you, when you literally have a defund the police movement, when you literally have city councils de defunding the police, decreasing their yes. budget, did not. By the way, that did not happen in Houston. Yeah. For the record. Oh, and, and you're electing district. For the record. You're, you're electing a number of district attorneys who are coming in and campaigning on the fact that we need overarching criminal and reform. bond reform and PR bonds and letting people out on PR. Brendan, what do you expect? What do you mean? Where did it come from? It's funny, Wesley. There's another double pants standard. on fire. Pants on fire, man. Yeah. There's another double pants standard. Pants on the ground. Pants, pants on the ground. ground. Walk around the head with your pants on it. Pull them up. <laughs> Pull them up. <laughs> There's another double standard. I was thinking about that. Who, what was the other guy? The Asian guy. She bangs. She bangs. Come on, <laughs> <Those> man. <dudes. laughs> Best things to ever come come out of American, American Idol. Idol, man. Pants, pants on the ground. On the ground pants bangs. on the ground. Walking like a woo with your pants on the ground. She bangs. She bangs. That's so good. So, speaking of, of double standard, one of the things we had talked about Kyle Rittenhouse uh, last time we convened, and it was an interesting follow up the Ahmad Arbery case. Mm -hmm. And the irony was we had had some conversations with people who were like, well, what are you going to say about Ahmaud Arbery? Well, I, I think justice was served sure. in, in that situation as well, once again, because the media wants you to believe if you're right leading in any way, you have to think that those individuals did the right thing. No, they didn't. Don't typecast me on that. No, they didn't. However. You saw, you, you saw, my, you saw what I put on social media too, yes, right? Yes. It's, it was, it's been a great week. It's been a great week for justice in America. Yes. Kyle Rittenhouse shouldn't be in jail, and those idiots that that, that killed him on Aubrey should be in jail. Yes. Well, how you like them apples? Yes. And 
right after that, Juicy, Juicy Smoulier. <laughs> <laughs> you know the funniest thing I saw about that? <laughs> Juicy Smoulier should be happy because the man that lied to the police and committed a race crime is behind bars. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's pretty funny. I like that. It's him. I like that. It's, 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 it's I, I got what you did there. Yeah, see, yeah. But if you, for the Ahmaud Arbery case, I found this really interesting because as I was reading some of the different court reports and things like that, because I find those things interesting, there's basically three different charges. The shooter, felony murder. Okay, mm-hmm. He's going to be behind bars for the rest of his life, should be. as he should. The other two, so his dad mm-hmm. and uh, the other guy who was with him, malice murder for them. Mm-hmm. Now... The interesting thing about that is that has a mandatory life sentence as well. Mm -hmm. And essentially the idea of malice murder is if somebody is killed and you have any part in that, part of the, any part in it, then you're basically an accomplice, right? And I found it interesting, Wesley, because the last time I read about malice murder was years ago. And when I read about it, it was some very left-leaning writings that said malice murder disproportionately affects minority communities and it's Mm. ridiculous to think that if somebody gets shot and killed uh, and you have other people who are accomplice or who Mm. are with that person that Mm. those people would be locked up for the rest of their lives Mm -hmm. as well Mm -hmm. and I was reading some articles and people were like this is ridiculous how can you do that like what if they're not the shooter if they're just there or what if they just push somebody and and things happen like we shouldn't be putting these people behind bars for the rest of their lives for that so what about oh yeah and I hadn't heard about malice murder for a couple of years since that. And when I read those charges, I was like, "So where's the where outrage? are y'all criminal reform people on this one? So where's the outrage? Yeah. Where's the outrage on this? That guy, those guys didn't pull the trigger. Yeah, they did not pull the trigger. Yeah. They're going to spend their lives behind bars. And, and guess what? I don't have a problem with it. But just be consistent. But be consistent. Yeah. And that word, that malice murder word was one that came up where I was like, huh. I think I've actually heard that before. Mm-hmm. And I went back and I'm like, interesting. The same people that were saying this is such a terrible idea and our, our system is broken and this is ridiculous and we can't do it anymore. So you don't want the law to be colorblind. Yeah. Yeah. It's either a good idea or it's not. Either it affects your your, your communities or, or it doesn't. And I saw that. I was like, wow, what? What in the world? But you know what I realized, Wesley? It's because their pants are on fire, no. man. You can't make good calls when your pants are on fire. No. And an, a, a, another thing that, that so many of, of our friends in media are talking about right now that I was listening to, to Morning Joe this morning, and uh, Joe Scarborough and, and, and Mika were going off about Elon Musk being announced as – Times person of the year. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the arguments to me were weird, right? It's like, well, how could you name? There's so many people that have done so much for, for vaccines, who have done so much for COVID and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, that's all true. However, this dude has a trillion dollar valuated company and is like going to put us on Mars. But Wesley, like, but, but Wesley, pretty cool. Even beyond that, where's the left? This guy has made solar panels and electric vehicles put a, oh, the thing. Yeah, Tesla and yeah. Where's yeah? Like, like, now, like yeah. So it's like, but 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 Rinda, but he's rich, so that, now they got to attack him. Yes, I mean when and even Wesley, you look at some of the people who have been the the Times People of the Year, like Walter Chrysler. Probably yeah. makes a lot of sense. Innovate, innovate. You know, yeah. Ted Turner with CNN being able to innovate news and how news is covered. Yeah. Jeff Bezos, Amazon. Yeah, I wish we could take him back, but yeah. In, yeah. Jeff Bezos, Amazon, and in, in innovating in the way that an industry yeah. is seen. If you haven't read the book Lift Off about SpaceX, this guy literally was the laughing stock of NASA and everybody else, and he somehow procured government contracts to that could potentially get us. To Mars. He's going to get us to Mars on his rockets. And I have a theory on all this. 
I mean, he's going to build a Starship Enterprise. <laughs> I'm convinced. Yeah, that'd be tight. Before he dies, he's building a Starship Enterprise. <laughs> Do you know what the Starship Enterprise costs to make? Roughly $1 trillion. Do you know that? I looked this up. No. Roughly $1 trillion is how much it would cost to make the Starship Enterprise. Now, to the Democrats... That's like a drop in the bucket. <laughs> Man, if, only a trillion dollars? If, if inflation keeps going where it goes, then you mean the Starship Enterprise costs as much as a Ford Focus? All right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but, five notes. But if you, if you think about, and I was thinking, like, what is it about Elon Musk that has people all in a, in a tizzy over this? You know, because, like, like, look, we could always pick somebody else who could have been Times Person of the Year. I mean, maybe Joseph Stalin shouldn't have got it twice. Yeah. I mean, like, we could always pick somebody else. Vladimir right? Putin. But what, yeah, but what is it that, that, that gets people up in arms? And if you think about the last couple of weeks, um, he's been very outspoken that he doesn't think vaccine mandates are a good idea. Well, he, does, he thinks it's such a bad idea. They had moved this company from California to Texas. That's how bad of an idea he thinks it is. And by the way, welcome to Texas. Yeah, welcome. Welcome. That's how bad of an idea, idea I think he is. And he ain't the only one. No. And so then we take this person who's accomplished all of these things that are, I mean, this guy could potentially be, and who cares what you think about him or if he's a good guy or he's weird and quirky. He's I clearly, mean, uh, he's clearly the, a generational talent. Yes. Period. Yes. Clearly. Like there is a chance that we look back, you know, and Elon Musk thirty like, years from like now, we look at him like 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 we look at Einstein. Absolutely, if there is a world where that happens. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, he he's a, he's a transcending mind and a transcending figure in our day. And the media is trying to figure out ways to discredit him from even being awarded an honor. Because he doesn't agree with the narrative that's being put out right now. So, so Elizabeth Warren is also y'all know I don't know if you saw this little, hold on. So, and, and basically, like she she got after Elon. Uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren got after Elon Musk because like you don't know, basically saying like you don't pay taxes, blah blah blah. How could Times Man of the Year, blah blah blah, because they don't pay taxes? I'm like, this is what cracks me up when you see like multi millionaires talking trash about multi billionaires. It really cracks me up about her. But basically, he came back and called her a Karen, which did he really? Absolutely. He's not. He didn't lie. Yeah. It's better than Pocahontas. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. could have called her that. He, yeah. he called her Karen. He's like S Senator Karen, basically talking about my tax code. So, so here's also the thing about a guy like Elon Musk. And we talk about this often. How much has he done? How much job production has he done? How much tax revenue has he generated based on his ideas and based on his oh. company? How many jobs has he provided for people? Like, like how much money has he, has he made people in the stock market? Well, I, I, I mean, I mean, this guy. Well, so, so, so like, if everyone's like, he's worth, I don't know, like what, a gazillion, you know, whatever, one hundred fifty billion dollars. Like, that's it, Wesley. Anybody that tells me Jeff Bezos is worth is worth two hundred billion dollars, that's ridiculous. Amazon's a trillion dollar company, and that's it. And Wesley. Look at what these he had to build this company in his garage. In his garage, Brendan. And Elon Musk, most people, if they made a hundred million dollars off of PayPal, they'd have gone to the Seychelles and you'd have never seen them again. Brendan. He this guy doubled down everything he had then cre to then continue to create a car company. I mean and this starts a rocket ship, a rocket company. Yeah. Look at you guys have see people like Elizabeth Warren though, that's the problem. Yeah. She is the problem. Because innovation in this country. Why is she the problem? Be, because she claims to be another race so that she can get preferred uh, treatment as a faculty member at an Ivy League school? I think is she, that why she's the problem? That's one reason why she's oh, the problem. Oh, okay, go ahead. She's also a problem because if you watch her drink a beer, it's nauseating. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> you, see, you didn't see that clip? No. When, she, when like, she asked her husband to grab her a beer at the refrigerator, it was like this corny, staged thing. Sounds she was terrible. Like president. It, it, it was, it's embar she's embarrassing. Right, she's corny. She's embarrassing. It's it's horrible. And like like you're right. Them backing a, a Democrat like her backing on Elon Musk, the guy that has the electric car company, that 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 actually has a higher valuation than Ford. That is 
absolutely hilarious. Because isn't that what you want? It's like, Brendan. Like, don't we want a cleaner environment? It's never and enough. Way? And don't and don't we want? Brendan, it's never enough. Innovators to come out and it's do nev- that. It's never and don't enough. we want to give other companies tax credits to do just that? Do you do you, do you know what else he did? He came out with Tesla, and then gave everybody the plans for it. Because he's like, I want everybody to have the idea, so we could we could have more electric cars in the market. And she's complaining about that. It's never enough, Rendit. No. With these people, it's never enough. No. Because we still need to figure out a way to demonize him. Exactly. Despite of all he's done. Demonize him. And, oh, not to mention, couldn't do that if it's not in capitalist society. Of course. But same thing. They did the same thing, they did the same thing with Joe Rogan. But that's the bad. They, they're doing the same thing with, with, with Ivermectin and with Joe Rogan. They're, they're doing the exact same thing. Yeah. How can we trash anybody that isn't fully on board with the woke agenda? No matter what they've done, no matter who they are, what they've done, what they've said in the past, no matter what. Yeah. If you aren't all in, you're out. Yeah. And no matter the good they're doing. It doesn't matter. Because truly, if the environment is the most important thing to you, name me a person who's done more for the environment than Elon Musk. And the guy that started the electric car company. If you, I mean, if, if you believe in that. If you, if, if that's, if, if, if that, you believe if that, in that truly is what's important, not only the electric car company, the guy who started the solar company too. And tried to scale it in a way where we could have grid scale storage. Like, whoa. Yeah. That's the Show bad me guy. the person who's done more. It's the bad guy. But no, we got to figure out a way to demonize him because, you know, maybe he doesn't. He's Tom's man of the year, but he's not woke. And, and he, doesn't he doesn't agree with vac- vaccine mandates. And vaccine so, mandates. So yeah. now he's, yeah. he's lost his mind. So his cars suck. <laughs> like, I mean, come on, man. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's sophomoric is what it is. It's sophomoric. But I really do believe, I, I think that as we even – really get to the point where we're nearing the end of the year. It's been a rough one for us in this country. Yeah, for a couple of years. Yeah. It's been a rough one. It's been rough in our, in our lifetime. I, I could probably attest to that. Yeah. I could say that. But like, but that's also a relative scale. And this is the, this is the issue that I have. Like, I've lived in Saudi Arabia for two years. Yeah. So... It's been the roughest two years in America, which is would be the greatest two years in any other country in the world. Yes. The, like our, on our worst day, we're still the greatest country in the entire world. Absolutely. And, so, and this is where <clears throat> people need to always kind of keep that in mind. Yeah. We've always been through. We've been through way worse in this country. Yes. Way worse, by the way. If 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 this is the worst two years that we've seen in the forty years of our existence, we're in a good place. I mean, oh my gosh, we're in a good place. And we can get out of this too. And we, when we're going to, it's just going to take Republicans to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of went in with this. You know, I sent you this thing last week about Rick Ross. And so, Rick, for those of for the you listeners, Rick Rose, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky Rose, Maybach music. So, Rick Ross is a rapper, a wildly successful rapper. It's great. And there was this clip that I saw that I sent to you on social media. It's wonderful. And it's, it's Rick Ross talking about how. He used to wash cars at a car wash, but he wanted to do more. So he would wash the cars at the car wash, and then he'd go ask the owner, basically, if he could, like, detail the car and get paid a little bit extra. And so he started making money, like, detailing cars. You want me to go get your gas? What else do you need me to what, do? What, you want to go get your gas? Yeah. Like, like, how can I – like, obviously, very nice cars and people that have, that have done well. <coughs> like, whatever I can do for you. I want to be your car guy, right? Get gas, clean it up, wash the car, whatever, detail it, all that kind of stuff. And then he made a mental documentation of the cars that he liked the most that he worked on. And now he owns every single car that he used to wash that he liked. And the moral of the story is is this. You might see this guy rapping on yachts, pouring champagne in the ocean and making it rain and all this kind of stuff, but you will never know that there was a time in this guy's life when he was washing and detailing cars and putting gas in cars for other people, and now that he's made it. And when I tell people this, I'm talking about the Elon Musks of the world. I'm talking about the Michael Dells of the world. I'm talking about the Jeff Bezos's, the Jeff Bezos's of, of, the, of the world. This is America. I'm talking about the Wesley Hunts of this world. Yeah. And Rendon Hunt. This could only happen in this country. That's it. That's it. This could only happen in this right. country. That's my whole point. And this might be our last episode before the before the Christmas holidays. We'll probably be back after the new year. 
But I want people to keep that in mind that when you see somebody that's done well and you see success, it ain't easy to get there. No. It's not what you think it is. It wasn't always easy. There's a loss in there. Me. There was a time when they were washing cars. There was a time when you went filed for bankruptcy multiple times, when you're starting your company out of your garage. Michael Dell started his company out of his garage in Austin as a UT student, fixing computers. So whenever I see the Elizabeth Warrens of the world and all these woke left people, all these rich billionaires don't pay taxes, do you know where they started from? The bottom. And now they're here. Don't ever forget that journey. And don't punish people because they're successful. Yeah. And by the way, you can do it too. This is America. If, if we spent half of the time figuring out how we can achieve, achieve, that we spend downplaying and talking down people that have achieved, imagine what we could accomplish. Maybe you too. Maybe you too could build a Starship Enterprise. But instead, the only thing you're going to do is change, your, is change your Facebook profile black and rant on social media and complain about how bad this country is, how unfair it is. Yeah. But that's okay. You do that. I'm on the Elon Musk model. Yeah, I'm on the Rick. Ro I'm on the Ricky Rose model. Yeah, what can we do? To what are be we going? What are we going to do to be? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And how can we help other people be better? Exactly. Take us out. And remember, smiles are contagious. So make someone's day. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.